with that one, we're going to see if we can get through all 20 of these and help you be ready for next Tuesday. Next week's our last week, at least our last full week. Okay, so we know, we know five goes out there. What about when it comes to letters? Yeah, what letters do they both have? Do these two terms both have? X. They both have X. Do they both have a Y also? No. no, just X. Now, which one do I take out, though? Do I take out the X squared or just the regular X? How do you know? Regular. Regular. Yeah, what, what's the rule? The smaller one, because it's what they have in common. I like Manuel has three coins. I have two coins. What we have in common is the lower number, two coins. We both have two. We don't both have three. He's got three, I've got two. We don't both have three. We both have two, right? It's what they have in common. So, yeah, so you take out the lower powers, what they have in common, x. So, 5x, and then you do the one parenthesis, huh? Mm -hmm. that good for GCF? Now, how do you know what goes inside? Dividing four to five give you 81. Yeah, you got to divide by five because you took out five. You, you're asking five times what will be 405. And that's going to be 81 Y, huh? Right, because 5X times 81 Y, 405 X Y. Okay, that's good. Now, what about the other one? about the other one? Divide by 5. Uh, 49. Is Four, that what it is? X. 49X. Because if you multiply, you can double check. If you multiply 5 times 49, it'll go back to 245. And X, yeah, why is it X? Because the X times the X will go back to X squared. Everybody good? So factoring is about unmultiplying. So in other words, we ask ourselves, will 5X times 81Y go back to 405XY? It will. And will 5X times 49X... Go back to 245x squared. Yes, it will. So it's right. Is that good? We off and running? GCF, easy? All right, let's try number two there. We finished there? Yeah, that's all there was to do. Uh, 6x cubed minus 8x squared. I know you're used to harder ones. <laughs> Let me make this a little clearer. All right. Again, they say GCF. Really? Uh, Baby coat. carrots, he has huh? Coat, Here's what? He has a cherry coat. Okay, <laughs> I don't know. All right. So 2 and X, right? 2 and X, because 2 goes into all those, and they all have an X, huh? Good. One big parenthesis. Remember when we do GCF, it's one big parenthesis. What goes in the inside? Whatever works, huh? So we're going to put three things in here. 2x times what? We'll go back to 6x cubed. Remember, out front numbers multiply, powers add, huh? Three, 2 three, times 3, three and x1 times x2. Because the powers will have to go back 3, huh? Minus. 2 times what will be 8? 4. And it got to be x1, x1 to go back x2, huh? And 2x times... Minus 5 would be minus 10, and it's already got the x, so we don't need another one. There it is. Now, should I go further and try to do something more? No. They said just get the GCF on this one. So that's it. Not even going to try to. Because sometimes, normally, if they, if they had, you know, in a lot of problems, I would look at this and think about if I could do the, what's it called, the buckle? That's not it. Bow tie. <laughs> I'm making up new names for things. <laughs> Whatever that thing. I told you it's new to me. Everything else I've done for 20 years. This is a new trick. Whatever that mother method is. Yeah, so normally we do the bow tie thing on a three-termer, right? But not here. Why not? Because they said just do the GCF. We good? So watch their instructions. That'll save you some time. You won't have to mess with anything else. You're just done. As soon as you've done the GCF, you know, one big parenthesis, done. Don't even think about doing anything else when they say GCF. All right, let's try that one. All right, so let me get you started. First two, last two. So we have four terms. We're going to do a two-two split. First two, last two. We good? And what do the first two have in common? 
Just pretend the whole problem is the first two. Oh, okay. You would take out the lower power, huh? X, X, X squared. X squared, right? For just the first two? Getting the idea? So keep going. All right, how are we doing? It's making any sense? So if I take out that X squared, what is that going to leave inside? X squared times what will go back to 3x cubed? 3x. Three X. <laughs> Never mind. Didn't mean that. And then x squared times what will go back to x squared? 1. Are we good to there? Is everybody with me so far? Is this making sense? Here, let me give you a Manuel. Let me show you something that will make it snap. Everybody got that first step okay? Then remember that when you're doing 2, 2... The last one is always the same parenthesis. It's got to be. So if you do that first, that'll make the whatever goes in the front totally easier. Is that making sense? How are we doing? You tracking with me there? So everybody see what I'm doing. So when you got four terms, so be on the test next Tuesday. Got four terms, first two, last two, first two. Take out what they both have, x squared. Put inside whatever works. And then the last two, the last two, it's going to be the same parenthesis. It always is. And so what do I put in front to make that work? 12. 12, huh? 12 times 3 would be 36. And 12 times 1 is 12. And don't forget this plus sign in between. Remember how the two parentheses are always the same? Mm -hmm. Use that to your advantage when you do the 2-2 two -two split. All right, now... Are we done? Is that it? How do you know you're not done? The horses. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad somebody's listening to my analogies and they're working for you. Karina. Right. Yeah, loose horses. You don't want any loose plus or minus signs. Right? You're never done factoring until all the pluses and minuses are taken. On this test we take on Tuesday, any multiple choice answers that have a loose horse, a loose plus or minus that's not corralled, that's a sucker option. Don't, don't grab those options. Does that make sense? Every answer, every because that's what it means to factor. It means to corral the horses. It means the parentheses. All the plus and minuses have to be contained in parentheses. So we're not done here. We're not done. What more can we do? Well, you should look at it like this. Those are the two terms, huh? That loose horse is the separator. Plus and minus is outside of parentheses. Separate, like a comma or something. There's the two terms. Mm -hmm. What do they both have? They both have Maybe I should help. What if you had x squared w plus 12w? What would you do? What could you take out in common? You would take out the w that they both have. Remove it, remove it, bring down x squared plus 12, huh? Wouldn't you you'd do that with the greatest of ease? You wouldn't even think twice about it. You know exactly how to do that, right? Because that W could multiply, multiply, and go back, huh? We good? This is making sense? Well, what if instead of a W, that was um, a Y? Would that be different? No, you go, well, they both got a Y. Right? Same thing. When they both have a common element... What's the pattern? What's the plan? You take the common element, and you put one of them, not, not both of them, huh? one of them in the front, and then remove it, remove it, bring down the x squared 12, because that could go back, huh? What if instead of a y squared, it was like a y to the seventh? Whatever, same thing, y to the seventh. Okay, so what if, and you know where I'm going, right? So what if it, what if instead of y to the seventh, it was, um, it was, I'm going to try to draw something. It was a horse. Is, is that a horse? Yeah. What if it was a funny looking bug or whatever? Yeah. It is a fly. This, this is the, this is the uh, resistant fly. He's the mutant. He's, he's learned to survive in the, two more days and he's into December. Right? He's impressive. He's going he's gonna to start a whole new breed of flies that can last all winter. All right, sorry. I'm, 
This is not, it's not part of the math lesson. All right, so, so what would you do if they had that funny? You, my point is, no matter how weird the thing is, they both got one, you take it out. It's in common. You put one of them in the front, huh? Right? So what do they both have? They both have a parenthesis 3x plus 1, parenthesis 3x plus 1. Don't they? See? So what do you do? Yeah, you do what we did when there was a funny bug or a funny Y or a funny X or a W. It's the same exact pattern. You just put one of those in the front. Do you get it? Right? Is that good? Is that making sense? It's the same thing, isn't it? Does everybody see that? Yeah. It's just a big version. They're, they're trying to trick you by making a big version of it. Do you see that? See how the patterns... Are? That's mathematical thinking, by the way, right there, is learning to train your mind and your recognition to see it's the same pattern even when it gets bigger. That's all math. Math is just bigger and uglier patterns as you move up the line and training ability to recognize them. So you go, oh, yeah, whatever, I see it. They both got a 3x plus 1. Put it in the front, just one of them. Start a new set of parentheses, remove it, remove it. Bring down the x squared plus 12, done. See how that's the same thing as if they both just had a W? Does that make sense? And we're done. How do we know we're done? All the horses are contained. All these rules starting to come to guess what we do review day is because I know it's, you know, it's hard when you got, you know, we, we, we studied each of these things alone, but now putting them all together is what a test is about. Does it make it more sense? I always liked seeing math the second time. It made a lot more sense the second time. It always did. When I would look back over things, studying for an exam, it'd be like, oh, I see. I see now. Is that happening for you? Is that good? All right. There it is. You know what to do with it, right? 2-2 two, two split. Four terms, 2-2 two, two split. So first two, last two. So what do the first two have in common? What goes into these first two? X. So what goes into 2 and 14? 2. two and then they both have X. So they don't both have Y. Mm -hmm. Okay, what does that leave behind? X, X minus 7Y. Seven good. good so far. Okay, now, what does that mean right away? Take, take that, the help I'm giving you. What help am I giving you? That it's, going to the it's got to be the same. It's not going to be different, right? But when you do these four, four termers, so, so this isn't in every factoring problem. I hope you hear what I'm saying. It's not in every factoring problem, but it's in the ones where you have four terms. And you do the two-two split, for sure. They're going to be the same, absolutely, for sure. Okay, so how do I know what goes in the front? Minus 7, because minus 7 times x would be minus 7x. And minus 7 times minus 7y is indeed plus. See how that works? That's correct, isn't it? See how that's actually right? Because we could, you could tend to think for a minute, you kind of think, well, no, maybe it's plus here, because you just kind of see that plus. But that's not right, huh? Mm -hmm. That wouldn't be right. Because for a couple reasons, they don't match, and minus times plus wouldn't go back to plus, would it? So does everybody see that? For two reasons, two good reasons, this is minus. And they match. And so this is my funny bug. Right? Mm -hmm. It's a big, ugly cockroach. All right. So whatever I'm just, you know, I, feel, I found over the years, the weirder I can make it, the more it will stick in your brain. That's about as weird as I can make it. <laughs> so um, with my limited artistic skills. That looks like a horse. Is it, is it getting more horsey? It's got no tail. That's a problem. Like the little prince horse. It looks like a tail with a head. Yeah. Like a chair. It's getting weirder. All right. Anyway, they both got one. So what do you always do when they both got one? It's like both having a W or something. It's in common. You put it in the front, huh? It's exactly the same pattern. It's just like if you had 2XW. Minus y w w. What would you do? You would take out the w and leave behind two x minus y, huh? Right? And that because that could go back, go back, couldn't it? That's all we're doing. It's just a bigger version 
of the same thing. Does everybody see that? This is just bigger than a W, but it's just like a W. Bless you. So you just put it in the front. Start a new set of parentheses. What does it leave behind? 2x minus 7. We're done. Is that good? Am I making good sense? Be able to cash that in for points on Tuesday? Questions on that one? All right. All right. Can you factor that one? So that's a three-termer now. It's not a four-termer. It's a three-termer. What do we do with three-termers? Well, actually, I should say, uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, what, what, what's the first step on every factoring problem? GCF, but there is none here, huh? It's just a good habit to be in. They'll always look, see, is there something they all have? No. All right. Then go on. Then what do you do for three terms? Bow tie. Bow tie. So I'm going to put up an overall game plan at this point. So there it is. I encourage you to write that down. So that's like an overall game plan for factoring. It's pretty much what... Shelby has in her sheet as well. Just another way to say it might, might be helpful. So the first thing you're supposed to do is GCF. We always try that first. We do GCF. There's one big parenthesis, isn't it? And then after that, it's all about how many terms. If you have two terms, what do we ever do with two terms? Double, double, or triple, triple. And if we have three terms, we do the bow tie method. And if we have four terms, we do, we split it up. Two, two terms, two terms, like that. So that's the game plan. So it's all based on how many terms we're looking at, huh? As far as what we try to do. It's all about how many terms. That'll guide you. So as you look back over here, first thing's GCF. There was none, so we skip it, right? There's nothing in common. And then we go, okay, what should we look for? Well, three terms. The only thing I'm going to try is the bow tie when there's three terms. So I'm going to do the bow tie. I'm going to say, okay. So what multiplies to be negative 20 what multiplies to be negative 20, what adds to be positive 1? So what multiplies to be negative 20 adds to be positive 1. What times what is 20? 4 and 5. Oh, I forgot to put the x and the x over there. 4 and 5. How do you do the signs? Bigger. Bottom bigger. Bottom bigger. The sign on the bottom goes on the bigger. So plus on the 5, minus on the 4. They multiply to be negative 20, so then these two, x minus 4, and these two, x plus 5. Either order, you can put them the other order around. We're done. Is this good? Feeling good about this? Going to be an A? Going to be a Tuesday A? All is well? Let's see, go into that final strong. All right, so, um, and compared to him, we, we were. Um, all right, so a squared minus 13ab minus 13ab plus 40b squared. All right, all right, so let's go through the uh, thinking on the steps. So what's the first thing you're supposed to try on every factoring problem? GCF. What's in common? Do they, do they all have something in common? Do they all have an A? No, the last one doesn't have an A. Do they all have a B? No. No, the first one doesn't have a B. Is there like a number? No, first one doesn't have a number at all. No, nothing in common. All right, skip that, move on. So what? So we're done with that. Now what are we going to do? How, it's all about how many terms are we looking at. How many terms are up there? Three terms. Three terms, right? It's, you know, one, two, three. Terms are separated by plus and minuses. Three terms? What's the only thing we ever do for three terms? Bow tie. Bow tie. So bow tie. We getting it? 
So first, uh, so we're going to bow tie it. We already did the GCF. There is no GCF. And we put A and A. All right, and we say what two numbers multiply to be 40, multiply to be 40, add to be the middle, add to be minus 13. Okay, use your calculator if you're not sure. What times what's 40? Five and eight. What signs, now remember, this, how, what determines whether they're plus or minus or the sign? What determines the signs? The bottom. The bottom sign, right? Everybody focused on that? The bottom sign tells you how do you get negative 13 out of these guys? Both negative, huh? They got to both be negative, don't they? So it's got to be negative 5 and negative 8. They're going to add to be negative 13 and they times to be positive. Two negatives multiply to be positive, huh? So there we go. So it's A, so it's these two. A minus 5, but, I'm going to leave a little space there. And these two, A minus 8, but since B squared is at the back, we've got to have B's at the back, just like A squared's at the front, and we have A's at the front. If you can read my writing, that's an A there of each parenthesis. Does that make sense? A squared at the beginning, A squared at the front means A is at the front, B squared at the back means B is at the back. There we go. How are we doing? Questions? You'll be able to get an A on Tuesday? Not by getting 40%. That's not going to happen. All right, let's try this one. one for a minute without me saying the mantra, but remember, you can't miss that first step or it's death Always. to the problem. Yeah. You've got to first ask, is there something in common? You can't just jump right into bow tie. You've got to look and say, is there some, every factoring problem, you've got to ask that question first. Is there something in common? Yeah. You know what? And actually, on the multiple choice, I think it'll be pretty easy. If you just look down, you know, you're going to have A, B, C, D. Yeah, you look and they have a bunch of twos in the front. And you go, ah, I bet there's a two in common. Yeah, it'll be easy for you, I think. Normally, I wouldn't advise to look at the answers before you solve the problem because it kind of mess you up. But I would on this test. I would totally look down at the options. Give them a quick look. If you see they all have, or at least a couple of them have a number in the front, then go, oh, I bet there's a GCF. And I bet it's that number. You know, I bet it's two. And you go back up, you go, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Two's in common. So you got to do that. Don't forget that step. You got to take out the two, do the one big parenthesis. Remember, it's always, always one. Don't, don't go right to the two. That's the other mistake. I see a lot of students, they'll put the two and they'll think that somehow they can do that and the two parentheses all at the same time. You cannot. You cannot because the numbers change. You, that's going to be the next step. You got to do the one parenthesis, and then on the next line we'll do the two. But you got to see the new numbers first. That when you do the one parenthesis, everybody with me on that? All right. So what goes inside? X squared plus twelve x minus forty-five. Right? Because if you multiply that, it'll go back, huh? Now, now leave that two in the front. That that's now do the bow tie. Now we do the bow tie thing. on what remains. X is there, right? And then we say, okay, okay. What, what multiplies to be minus 45 and adds to be 12? See how those are different numbers now? They're not the 24 and the 90 anymore, are they? They've changed. That's why you gotta see the new numbers by doing the one big parenthesis with the GCF. Okay, so what two numbers multiply to be 45? Yeah, you should calculate it three times 15. Now remember, this, now the sign on the bottom is plus, isn't it? The bottom tells you the signs. The bottom tells you the signs. So bottom bigger, bottom bigger, bottom bigger, right? So that bottom one goes on the bigger, plus 15 minus 3 makes plus 12. 
and they multiply to be negative 45. So there's my number. So here we go. So it's two. That's two still in the front. Don't forget about him. He's still got to be there as part of the final answer. And now the two parentheses are x minus 3 and x plus 15, either order. You don't divide 15 by 3? Uh, no, good question. Yeah, why don't I divide 15 by 3? Because it doesn't go into both. Remember, it's got to go into both. And it doesn't go into x. If this was 3x, you know, then 3 would go in and I would do the 15, uh, 3 for both. Really good question. Yeah. And also, uh, Manuel, it's what ends up next to the x. Like if you're thinking, wait, because you, you're probably thinking, didn't we learn a rule that whatever we get, it's, it's not what ends up here. So it's right next to the x that we then divide by. And there's nothing. Mm -hmm. So that make sense? And so there we go. Is that good? On that? Getting the hang of that? So what's the first step on every factoring problem? GCF. Don't forget that. If you forget that, it'll just mess everything else up. Is that good? All right. Okay, there we go. Let's try that one. Okay, so what's first step on every factoring problem? I mean, at least we look for it. It's not always there. Yeah, is there something they all have in common? We look for letters and numbers, huh? Is there a number that goes into all three of them? 6Y. Yeah, they all have a 6. And is there a letter that they all have? Y. y. 6 and Y. Huh? One big parenthesis. And then whatever works. 6Y times X squared. 6Y times 9X. 6Y times minus 2. We good there? So far, so good. Now, um, we've got that part, right? Now, the part that remains, we should try the bow tie. It's not going to go anywhere. But in general, you would try it. You would go, okay, okay, I'm going to do the bow tie. What multiplies to be negative 2 adds to be 9. So what multiplies to be negative 2 adds to be 9. What times what's 2? Only 1 and 2, and no way that's going to make 9. So it just doesn't work. It's okay. We can stop here because the horses are contained. It's okay to stop there, right? They're corralled. There's no loose horses running the streets, right? So it's good. So, well, but technically, there. isn't like 6y kind of out? Oh, but no, no. Loose horses are pluses and minuses, not contained. Yeah. It's pluses and minuses. That's the issue. See, like up here, we had pluses and minuses not contained. We weren't factored yet. Yeah. So for math club, that would be the answer? Yeah, that is the answer. Yeah, let me, hear, let me double check. All right, let's try this one. First step, what's in common? Nothing. It's good we look for it. And then we do the bow tie. So when it comes to the bow tie... Um, we multiply the number in the front to the number in the back, right? And that gives me positive 110 as the multiply number, right? Whenever there's a number in the front, you've got to multiply the number in the back. And then the middle one is the add, as usual, like that. Now, what do you put in the, the tie part? Right here, 22x and 22x. Remember that? When, again, so this is all what's special when there's a number in the front. You've got to put it in both spots. But just a regular x, so we don't put x squared. Huh? Just 22x, 22x, right? Remember that? All right, take it from there. All right, how you doing on the bow tie? So you've got to, got, to, got to take the 110 right over here in the side, and then you divide by 2. Remember, you usually can't go to divide by 2. Three, four, five. You divide by two, you get 55. And the whole time you're looking for a pair of numbers, here's two and 55, that can make the minus 21 somehow. That can add or subtract to be 21. Can two and 55 add? No, that'd be 57. Subtract? No, that'd be 53. They're not even close to 21. Keep going. Divide by three, doesn't even work. Some crazy decimal. Divide by four, doesn't work. Some crazy decimal. Five and... Is it 22? Um... Is that what it is? Yeah, 5 and 22, does that work? No, 5 and 22, they can't make 21. Divide by 6, I think it doesn't work, right? No. 
Divide by seven. Seven doesn't work. What, what is it? Eleven. Oh, okay. Eventually, if you do eight, it doesn't even work. Nine, it doesn't even work. Ten, it's eleven. So then you go, oh, yeah, ten and eleven. Ten and eleven, they can make my twenty-one, huh? So does everybody see how you find the pair? <clears throat> you just take the one ten. Use your calculator. You can do you this super quick in your calculator, right? Just divide by two, three, four, five, you just, and any time you get a pair of whole numbers, you know, the not decimals, then you think about whether that pair of numbers can somehow make the 21. Right? They're all coming from the 110. That's no question. I'm wondering, can they also do the 21? 2 and 55, they can't do 21. 5 and 22, they can't do 21. 10 and 11, yeah. 21. So that's my pair, 10 and 11. Now, who tells me the signs? The bottom. The bottom is negative 21. What is he telling these guys about how to make negative 21? Minus and minus. Both minus, huh? Both minus. Yeah, and, they, and those two negatives multiply to be positive 110, don't they? Okay, now this part you might not be totally um, warmed up about. I'm trying to warm you up here to this. Remember what you do now? You look at these two and you say what goes into both of those. You, you, don't just bring, you don't just bring down 22x minus 10. No, no, no. You've got to reduce them, kind of like reducing a fraction sideways or something. What goes into 22 and into 10? 2. two. So divide by 2, divide by 2. What does that leave us? 22 divided by 2 leaves us 11x. Ten, minus 10 divided by 2 leaves us minus 5, huh? And then whatever answer, is that okay so far? Do you remember that? Then whatever answer you get next to x, that's what you divide the other two by. It just tells you automatically, remember? We'll throw the y in at the end. Divide those both by 11. So this would be 22 over 11 is 2x. And minus 11 over 11? Minus 1. And then, yeah, you're right. we got to throw those y's in because there's y squared on the right. i got to sneak a y into the right of each parenthesis. And there we go. Yeah, the letters are easy, right? The letters are the easy part. X squared on the left, X is in the left of each parenthesis. Y squared on the right, Y is in the right of each parenthesis. That's just, that one's a no-brainer. But the numbers are tough. Is that good? Is that coming back? This is why we review. You're going to keep it over the weekend? So you'll be ready to go. I'll just hand you the test when you first come in on Tuesday. You'll be ready to go. You'll be warmed up. There. So let me rewrite this one. I'm going to use an X. My Z's look like twos. 33X plus 28X squared. Uh, minus 28. Okay. Yeah, so let's reorder them. So, so the, the X squared has to come first. And then the 33x, and then the minus 28, right? So we reorder, and then we ask, is there something in common to all of them? No, there's no number. There's, they don't all have an x. Now you're wrong. All right, she's going to show us. This is a terrible one. Okay, so 28 and negative 28 is 7, what is it? 784? 784? So we have a negative 784, right? So 28 and 28. We're going to break that down. So 28 and 28. So then we're going to break that down. So what two numbers give you 28 when you multiply them? 7 times 4. Mm -hmm. These are awful numbers, right? This is a way to help when they're numbers. So now we can break that 4 down more, right? To 2 and 2. So now, what we can do is mix match. So we can do 7 and 2, and then 2 and 2 and 2, and multiply them. Or we can see that 7 and 7 is 49, and 4 and 4 is 16, right? 49 and 16. Those are the and then you add them? Yeah, so now you can see that 49... Minus 16 is 33, right? 
So now when you do your bow tie. 28. X. And we have a negative 784 on the top. We have a 33 on the bottom. So now we have 49 and negative 16. But you see how she got that? Right, but breaking down the 784, she saw the 49 and the 16. So you get 7, you get 4x. Right, so there's more steps. Yeah, there's more steps. But everybody get to there. Has everybody seen it to there? Yes. So that's a really awful number. So see the advantage of what she's showing? So then these super hard ones. You could just say, okay, look, I got the 784 by 2828. Let me just write 2828. Break those down and kind of look at the numbers. And go, oh, 7749, 2222, 16. Look at the multiple factors. So the only reason I broke down that four even more was because that's not a prime number. So prime numbers are itself in one. That's the only thing that it could be multiplied by. So that's the lowest that you can go. And then after that, you just do mixtures of them, and you kind of pick out and pick and choose. But it makes it easier not just randomly choosing numbers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you're doing smaller numbers, it's easier the way the way that he does it. But big numbers like this, it's better just to go prime. So you call that yeah prime. That is normally yeah. called prime. Yeah, that's it's like a prime tree. Factor tree. Or factor tree, prime tree, whatever you want to call it. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, so just, you want to finish it up? You want to, so let's, is everybody making sense to there? So we have a 28 in this front, right? So we have to simplify by 28, either by one side or split it up and do two, two sides, right? So what can we do? What can 28 and 49 go into? 7. Do you, want a, you want a fresh screen? Are you good there? Or? No, it's okay. I can do it right here. So if you ever want to go fresh screen, you just, you just hit the um, forward arrow and it goes to a new page. Oh, okay. okay. So we're going to simplify that side by 7, right? 7, yes. Right here. Maybe I should do a new page. I'm going to do a new one. It's just the pain. 784, what was the middle term? That was 49 and 16. 32 in the bottom. How do you erase? Oh, yeah, you find it? Yeah. Yeah, it's and it's 33? Mm -hmm. 32 plus, yes. And then... 28 on each side. 28x. Oh, I'm horrible with this. Okay. <laughs> so now you divide everything by 7. And then... Can't stand sloppy work. <laughs> and now we had a 28 in the front. So if we did it by 7, we have to do the other side by 4. By 4, yes. Then the 16 was negative, right, wasn't it? Yeah. So now, if we divide 28 and 7, what do we get? 4x. Four. Four and then 49 divided by 7? Seven. 7. And then we have 28 divided by 4? And negative 16 divided by 4. Minus 4. And that's the answer? Good, so that prime method helps, huh? Those are just awful numbers. Yeah, so Shelby's method is a good one. Does that make sense on that? All right, thank you, Shelby. So see how, so she did it back there again? Breaking down that. So you, if you get awful numbers, and this is just another way if you're stuck. If you're just looking at 784 and just going, ah, 784, I don't know. You could always just say, well, what did it come from? 2828? 
what makes them 4, 7, and you start looking at combos of 7, 4, 7, 4. Multiply these two, multiply those two, different combinations of multiplying them. To do it, it's got, it's got to use them all, though. You've got to use all the pieces. You can't say, well, I'll just use 1, 7, and 2, 4, see if that works. That'll never work. All these things together make the 784. So you're going to have to use them all also somehow to make the 33. It's going to be the all. So you factor it all the way to prime, then you have to use every prime number. You don't have to go all the way to primes. Probably a good idea, too, but you don't have to. You could stop here at 7474. My point is, you, you, everything you, all the stopping points have to be used. That's a better way to say it. You can't, so if you stop at 7474, great. Well, what combinations you're looking for, you have to use both 7s and both 4s in anything you try. So you know 7 4 is 28 already, but if we broke down that 4 to like how I did, you would have to like regroup those 2s down there. So you could do like 7 and 2 and then 3 2s and that 7 up there. Does yeah, so some other combinations might be, how about this 7 and 1 2, and the other three twos and this seven. That might, that might work. Do you see what Shelby's saying? She's saying it's going to be some combination of all stopping points. You can't just use, you can't leave anybody out. So it's not That'll never work. the exact answer, but it's going to give you less time on trying to find Yeah, less, it limits the possibilities quite a bit. Mm -hmm. It kind of hones you in. Does that like, make sense? Like right there, at least three... We can keep going, but we start when we find our factors that give us the 33, like the, the bottom right. number. Right, right. That's the it, the 33. The, it's, it's good to know. So let's try 11x cubed, number 11. 11x cubed minus 6x squared minus 17x. All right, there we go. What's the first step on every factoring problem? GCF, what do they all have? An X. Okay, now three terms. Let's bow tie it. So we take that 11 in the front times the 17 in the back and bow tie that. Right here, let me put it down here. And so, what is that, minus 170, 167, no, 187? They mult, those multiply, and they add to be minus 6. All right, so how do you, so with such large numbers, 187, how am I going to even deal with that? Well, you take the 187, and you divide by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You just use your calculator real quick. Divide by 2, it doesn't even go. Divide by 3, it doesn't even go. Divide by 4, it doesn't go. Divide by 5, it doesn't go. Divide by 6, it doesn't go. Divide by 7. But since 11 Mr. and 17 Aaron, are prime numbers. But, but right there, do you just see minus and plus and add them and give you the minus 6? What's that? Do you see the, the, the factor you use? The numbers you used to get 187? Right. They're the ones, huh? Yeah, eight. good observation. Good observation. Yeah, <laughs> man. Well, you're right on. 11 and 17. Now, you guys are all like... No, 11 and 7. 11 and 7. 11 and 7. You guys are all like, just use those ones. You're right. You're totally right. Especially because they're prime. It's right. 17. Oh, it is 17. Seven, minus 17. Oh. Oh. I'm struggling here. Wait, wait. No. <laughs> I do. So, so sevens and no is what you're saying? So it's 11 and 17 and Thank you. All right, there we go. That's the one you used to get 187. I, 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 you're right. You're totally right. I'm trying to make the bow tie thing work, but you're totally right. What you're seeing is totally right. Yes. All right, and what signs? Bottom bigger, right. Bottom goes the bigger, just like it is up there. And 11x out here and 11x there. All right, and then, okay, so we're ready to wrap it up. Now, these two, what goes into both those two? 11. 11, divide them both by 11. That leaves x plus 1. Yeah. And then the other two, 11x minus 17.
And then you are the one outside. Inside. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Don't forget that extra accent that we got off in the beginning, huh? He's got to be there. There we go. Is that good? Are we okay with that? Let's try this one. This is a 225 here. All right, so there's the first step. Take out the GCF. You take the lowest power of X, which is plane X, lowest power Y, plane Y. Okay, so what's, what's on the inside? Whatever works. XY times X squared and XY times minus 225 Y squared. We good? Good so far? Now, so the GCF step is up. That's just step one, right? GCF. Now, let's follow this recipe plan here. What, what should I even be looking for or, or thinking about at this point? Should I be doing bow tie? Should I be? No. Why should this not even, bow tie shouldn't even be in my mind right now? Because there's only two terms, not three. Bow tie is only for three. Well, what do you do for two terms? Yeah, we only look for double, double, triple, triple. It's all we do for two terms. So are these two a double, double, or a triple, triple? Are they, is X some, a double? Yeah, he's X, X times X. Well, is 225 Y squared a double? What, what is he twice? 15 Y. The whole thing, not just the, not just the, the number part, 15 Y. Got to write the whole thing as a double, double. Does that make sense? Don't just write 15, 15. Or and also, don't just write 15, 15, Y, Y. That's two double doubles. We're not doing two double doubles. We're doing a double double. 15 Y, 15 Y. That's a double, right? That makes sense? See how I wrote it? something twice, something twice? It's a double double. So what then? What do we do? Okay, great. It's a double double. What do we do? Yeah, two parentheses. Leave, leave that original x, y in the front still, you know. And then the two items that make the left, the x and the x, go left, left. The two items that make the right, 15y, 15y, go right, right, left, left, right, right. And what goes in the middle? How do you get negative? How do two things multiply to be negative? One positive, one negative. Either order doesn't matter as long as one is plus and one is minus. There was a rule to use before. What it was? Um... The soap? Yes. That's for triple. For Soap's thing. for the triple, triple, not the double, double. Double, double is always one plus, one minus. And there it is. Is that good? You remember how to do that? Will you be able to do that with everything all mixed up on the exam next Tuesday? Nope. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> not a chance. Never going to happen. No. Now you can do this. It's just a little practice. Is that good? Questions I can answer on that one? So what led me through that? Well, first step is GCF. And you can put this right in your 3 by 5 card. This would be a good thing to put in your 3 by 5 card. First step is GCF. Second step, two terms, double, double. Double, double. Left, left, right, right. One plus, one minus. Okay, let's try that one. 75 R squared minus 12. All right, so first step in every factoring problem, GCF. GCF. Now, if you're looking at that, you go, well, I don't know 75. Um, that's okay. Start with the smaller number. Start with the 12. Because it's got to go into both, right? And the 12 is easier to work with. So if you're looking at a couple numbers and you're trying to do, like, find out what's in common, start with the smaller. Take the 12 and go, okay, what goes into 12? Three. Yeah, like 3 times 4, 2 times 6. Try those numbers. So if you try 3, take your calculator and take 75 and divide by 3, you'll go, oh, 25. Yeah, 3 goes into both. So take out the 3. See how I came up with that? I just looked at the 12, the smaller number. And looked at what went into 12. 3 and 4, check those into 75. Okay, so what works? We'll divide by 3 here, and you get 25 r squared, and divide by 3 here, and you get 4. So far, so good? So that's step 1, GCF, one big parenthesis. So that's just step 1. Now, what should I look for? This is where I'm trying to help you, because we've done so many different things, it can be confusing, huh? But really, 
it's all about how many terms. If there's two terms, we don't try bow tie. It's double double or it's triple triple. That's all we ever do with two terms. So all you need to look for then is is that a double double? Yeah. What 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 will make twenty five r squared? Five. Five r. Yeah. Five r. Five r. Yeah. Make sure you write five r five r, not five five. Good. And what about four? Two and two. two, and two. So it is a double double, isn't it? So five r. Five r. So, so the, the two items that make the left go left, left. The two items that make the right go right, right. And what goes in the middle between them? Plus and minus. One plus, one minus. And we're done. Does that make sense on the double-double? You always have one positive times one negative, huh, to make the negative four. We good? Uh, no, yeah, good question. You can have the negative first and the positive. The order doesn't matter. You just, but you just got to have one of each. That's totally fine. All right, let's try that one. That'll be a good one. Try that one. First off, uh, this is, uh, what's GCF? There's no GCF, nothing common. Okay, two terms. Two terms. What do we do with two terms? Double, double, or triple, triple. It's all we're even thinking about. We're not bow tying anything. Is that a double, double? Yes, for sure. That's going to be x squared times x squared. And this is going to be 9 times 9, right? So, so uh, and then we do the two parentheses. And we do the two items that made the left. And where do they go? Left and left. And the two items that make the right. And they go right and right. And, and how are you going to get negative 81? What signs, I mean? Plus, Plus one positive, one negative. Either or, it doesn't matter who's first and who's second. Just got to have one of each, huh? Now, I think y'all got to there pretty good. But now there's more. Because these guys are saying I'm another double-double. Right? But one of them's a plus, and we don't do the plus. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, I just hate that. Remember that? I know Christina remembered that. I think she might be the only one. I don't know. Maybe I missed a couple other people that remembered that. This guy says, not me. Not me. I'm staying the same. Because he's plus. That makes all the difference in the world. Whereas this one says, oh, I'll break down. I'm an XX33. He's a double-double. This is just the beginning. Are you going to Mass 63? This is child's play in Math 63. Just sincerely. Sincerely. I'm making up exam four in the final for 63 now. Way harder than 61. This is just the beginning of the difficulty. I'm not trying to... Well, I'm trying to scare you appropriately. No. Right fear is a good thing. Right? Like you scare your children about playing on the freeway. That's called love. Right? Don't play on the freeway. Smash and you're dead, kid. Scare them. Then they won't play on the freeway. So I want to tell you... If you're going to try to be, whatever work level you put in this semester, if you're taking 63, the bar is quite a bit higher. You have to plan to put a lot more time in. I'm having about a 40% pass rate in my 63 class right now. It's just hard material. Yeah, it's hard material. Shelby. But you can still break down that X squared plus 9, though. What's that? You can still break that down. Well, I'm going to... Oh, it's actually not that. Oh, okay. Really? That'd be x squared plus 6x plus 9. Okay. I'll, I'll get there in a minute. Okay, so, we'll, so let's, let's do this one first off. So this one will break into x, x, 3, 3, 1 plus 1 minus, right? So this guy does break into 2, right? He does break into 2. Everybody good so far? So this guy does, because he's got a minus. Minus makes all the difference in the world. All the difference in the world. This is our final answer. Let me prove to you that other answers would not be correct. So, for example, um, you, might, you might think, it'd be natural to think, why didn't we make this one x plus 3, x plus 3? Um, 
because yeah. it's just not right. Let me show you. Let's just let's just foil it out. Watch what happens. X squared plus three x. X squared plus three x, and this guy goes to both plus three x plus nine. See what you would get? You would get six x in the middle. That's not what this guy was. That's just not true. Does everybody? Have to cancel out, doesn't it? Yeah, because you got to have that middle term cancel out. Yeah, so in other words, double-double is only doable when you have a minus in the middle. So let me, let me add that. Let me go back here. So it's kind of like double-double, but twice, right? Yeah, we did double-double twice, but then only once on one side, huh? Double-double twice. <laughs> yeah, double-double-double. So, right here, double-double. Let me write only <laughs> minus. Triple-triple, either... Plus or minus. Do you remember those rules? See, the rules get harder in 63. There's more of them. I did, in Math 63, I did two sections a night in this chapter. In here, I did like a whole night for each of these and then a big review day. For 63, the first night, I did two sections. Next night, two sections. Next night, two sections. Exam. That's, that's how 63 moves. So it's, you know, they just expect you to grab stuff quicker, more stuff, fast, boom, 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 there's the test. So, so I encourage you, you know, make sure you're really applying yourself to these rules. So double, double, only the minus, triple, triple can do either one. Remember that distinction? So you've got to remember all those rules you learned. They all come into play in, in 63. So that's always the hard thing about algebra, huh? It's like a language. You're learning Chinese. So when you're in Chinese 3... Stuff you learned in Chinese 1 matters because you're still using it, huh? That's what math is. It just builds, 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 builds. So you can't forget that earlier stuff. So, yeah, so let's remember that um, back here. So am I making sense first off then that, that this one breaks down because he's a minus, mm -hmm. but the other one does not. He's still part of the answer. He just stays as he is because he's a plus. This is not the correct breakdown, is it? Does that make sense? Are we all good? So let me... Okay, let's try that one. All right, two terms. This is a triple-triple. All we look for with two terms is double-double, triple-triple. This is triple-triple. Now, <laughs> don't, don't write this. This is what I see a lot of students writing. Don't write that. That will probably mess you up. That's good. I was wondering, Matthew... I had my eye on you. No, no. Why? Why? What's wrong with that? Why? Why is that not good? Because that's like a triple triple. Yeah. Right. I mean, you're right. You want to interweave them. You want. You want to go three x, three x, three x. You can only have three, right? So don't you know, don't make triple 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 triple. Right. And then and so so do it that way. Mix in the letters with the numbers because you want three separate things only. And what about this other one? 4y, 4y, 4y. Don't write 4, 4, 4, y, y, y. Write 4y, 4y, 4y. See how that's triple, triple. Okay, so then remember we learned a pattern for this. A little parenthesis. Remember? And a big. Remember? It's a little parenthesis and a big. Little and a big. And how do we do it? It's almost... How about I do it this way? It's a left, a right, two lefts, two rights, and one of each in the middle. Remember that? It's like dancing, a left, a left foot, your right foot. I never could figure out dancing very good. But, um, right? Is that making sense? So it's always that way, left, right, left, left, right, right, one of each in the middle. So let's do it. So one left, one right, two left, two of the left items, 3x, 3x, 9x squared, we good, that's two lefts. Good. Two rights. 4y, 4y. 
16y squared and one of each in the middle. One of each what? One of, the, one of these guys, the, the 3x, and one of these guys, the 4y, that makes 12xy. One of each. One of each. A, one of the items from the left and one of the items from the right. One of each in the middle. 3 times 4, 12xy. So I mean, we don't have any pluses or minuses yet. Remember, we do that by the rule. What rule? Soak. Soak the signs. Remember that? Let's soak the signs. So same opposite, the three spots, same opposite, always positive. Same as what? Opposite of what? Same as the first one. The original. Yeah. What, now, remember, because this one, you can do either one. Either plus or minus, remember? For triple, triple. See how triple, triple is different than double, double? Double, double, only minus works. Triple, triple. We're doing plus right now, and it's fine. It can do it either way. It's just the signs change a little bit. You, whatever you started with, you do the same as what you started with, so plus. Opposite of what you started with, so minus. And always positive at the back. And there it is. That makes sense. We got to do one more of these. You guys are obviously a little rusty on this one. Let's do one more and we'll call it a night. Is that one good? One more of these kind and we'll be done. We good on that? Do you understand how the triple triple works? One left, one right. Two left, two right. One of each. Put that right in your three by five card for the exam. All right, let's let me make one up here for you. Let me think if I can make a good one. All right, I'm going to I'm going to try to trick you. Two, take out that GCF and do one parenthesis, right? This will be 8x cubed, 27y cubed. Now go. How are we doing? So first off, I'm going to write 2x. Whoops. What am I going to write? 2x, 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 3y, 3y, 3y. Right? Triple, triple. And now, don't forget about that two in the front. He has to still stay there. And I do a little parenthesis and a big. And then what do I do? One of the left items on the left. Right? Remember, it's one left, one right, two left, two right, one of each in the middle, huh? Right? So one right, three Y. Two left, 2x, 2x, 4x squared. Two right, 3y, 3y, 9y squared. One of each in the middle, a 2x and a 3y, 6xy. Does that make sense how I did one left, one right, two left, two right? And then what do we do for the signs? So, same as what we would we start with? Minus, the so same. Whoops, that's, that's a big minus sign there. Same. Opposite, always positive. There's the 